ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, the play's the thing. With your host, Judy Sleed, special guest, Leah Oppenheimer, educator. Now here's Judy, Judy, Judy. Paris. Oh, that was a pretty song. Thanks <laughs> once again for the plays, the thing. And I have an old friend as my guest. And I know her for so many years, and I just never knew anything about her. And now is the time to find out all the dirt. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leo. gone. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, Judy. <laughs> It is so wonderful to have you here, and I'm so happy we reconnected after all these years because we used to spend so much time together. Right, we did. So tell us, tell us, tell us that where you live in the Hamptons. I live in Tech Harbor. So that's a lovely place. In the village, yes. Yes. And how long have you been there? We have lived in Sag Harbor since 1995. I guess you like it there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got lucky. We moved before the real, the Sag Harbor real estate went out of control. I oh, so. And uh, where were you living before that? Manhattan. Manhattan. Yes. Are you a Manhattan girl? No, not really. No. I'm really a northwestern girl who ended up who liked living in a big city. Northwest. What? Near what? Seattle. Near Seattle, Washington. Tacoma, Washington. You were born there and raised there? No, I was raised there, yes. Oh, wow. I never knew that. See, you never said that to me. Well, you never asked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so what brought you to the big city? Work. Social work. Oh, you, you were a social I worker? I was a social worker. You went to school? To in Chicago. A, in Chicago. Got my MSW, moved to New York and started working in Bedford-Stuyvesant at a little Catholic hospital. And where did you live? Then I lived in Brooklyn, and sooner or later I managed to get to, into Manhattan. And you did this all by yourself? Well, basically. Basically, well, that's great. And your whole family is still On the there? West Coast, yeah. Mostly they're in the West Coast, yeah. And you go back to visit? Uh, no, sometimes. <laughs> so how big is your family, I mean, before you got married? Well, it's sort of all over the place, you know. You know what they say about staying with your family? After three days, like dead fish, it starts to stink? <laughs> no, that's what my question <laughs> was. My question was, I didn't expect that. Like how many siblings you have? And well, that's... including my stepbrothers and sisters, I had eight siblings. Wow. Step? Yes, Children. my families were a blended family when I was about 11. My father remarried, and there were a whole bunch of us. So you stayed with your dad? Yes. Not eight, my gosh. How could you remember all the names? Oh, it <laughs> seems like a small group after a while. Yes. Oh, wow. See, I didn't know all these. I'm so happy you came here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and uh, I know your husband. How did you meet him? Oh, we met in a nursing home. My gosh, you were not <laughs> old enough to go to a nursing home. <laughs> we met in a nursing home. We were both doing AIDS work. It was 1988. AIDS, AIDS work. HIV AIDS work. Oh. That little nursing home was in the, epi the uh, epicenter of the AIDS epidemic in the United States. It was in Greenwich Village. And so they decided to open up various programs for people with AIDS, people living with AIDS. And so John was the medical director. And I got hired to sort of invent the first day treatment program for people with AIDS, a medical, social, drug treatment, nutrition, Recreation, you name it, we did it, all under one roof. That's amazing. I don't know if you want to tell what year that was. 1988. Oh, it was, er 1988. Fairly early in the epidemic. And uh, you fell in love first sight? I did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I thought, wow, 
This guy is so cute. Yeah, he is still cute. He's still cute, yes. <laughs> He's still cute. Well, you don't look bad yourself. <laughs> no, you know, children, they take a toll. Yeah. No, no, I said you don't look bad. You I look know. very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now you're uh, living here and you have four wonderful children. Mm -hmm. And two grandchildren. Two grandchildren. You are, I'm two up on you. I have four. <laughs> you have four? When did you add another one? Well, I only knew about what happened. What happened? Well, things happened, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that other we, one come from? We multiply. Now I have a granddaughter. I have three grandsons and one granddaughter. Mazel tov. Yeah. Well, that's right. You met my son when we had the rehearsal. And then he only had two children. He only had one, maybe, at the time. Oh, I thought, and maybe he, you had a little girl while I still he, knew you. Oh, well, then that's it. So my daughter has two. Oh, that's right. And then he has two. Boy, oh, that's great. <laughs> yes. So when I knew you, you, you didn't have any grandchildren. No. And now, and uh, you are a teacher. You teach many different things. Right. Can you name some of them? Well, my great passion in life is my Hebrew school, where I teach uh, prayers, Hebrew reading, um, preparation for the holidays. You name it, I can, I can sort of manage to teach it. Um, and then I also teach music in several guises, two guises. Right now, I'm just finishing up uh, a long, a long um, tenure of duty at uh, the charter school, where I've been doing providing music for the kids who are K through eight. And, and the charter school is in. It's on Stephen Hans Path here, right here in East Hampton. East Hampton. Mm -hmm. and we are in Wayne Scott. We're in Wayne Scott. It's just one town <laughs> over, yeah. and um, and it uh, it provides. Uh, schooling for kids, both normal kids and kids who might have special needs in an inclusion program. And it's been wonderful. I've had a wonderful, wonderful tenure there. It's, um, the kids are fun and appreciative, and I've learned a lot about teaching from them. And a lot of music. Yeah. Last weekend, I, I was playing with um, the public TV channels at home, and the Metropolitan Opera had a great performance of Gluck's um, Orfeo and Eurydice. And it was an amazing production with Mark Morris, Modern Dancers, and, and a, um, a female lead in a male role, a trouser, a trouser role. And it was just a fabulous, fabulous modern production of this play. So I took it to school on Monday and showed the middle schoolers and they were so excited. They could hardly wait to see this production. And you know, not many places do you get to go teach opera. So, That's true. That's true. And to have a group of seventh and eighth graders who want to see an opera with you has probably been one of the most satisfying things I've ever gotten to do. Well, I think your enthusiasm, you know, goes to them. Probably. And they see that you're, you like it. I do so like it. So they want to... Do it, and that's a wonderful approach. It's a great approach. I have a little guy who came up to me a few days ago who does a lot of time on his computer, and he said, Miss Leah, Miss Leah, you won't believe what I found. I said, well, what, what, Frankie? He mm -hmm. said, I got to show you this cartoon on YouTube. <laughs> OK, Frankie, let's go see the cartoon on YouTube. So we went and saw it. It's the three chipmunks yeah. doing a scene that only appeared in Japan of uh, three little maids from school, Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh. And he reckon, we did Gilbert and Sullivan three years ago in my program, and he still remembers. He's only 12. That was very exciting. Oh, yes. Well, that probably gives you satisfaction that he remembers what you taught him. It's, no, it's nice to know that you get to translate culture to children and that they're yes. going to keep you with them. Every time they hear three little maids for ordinary, da, 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 da. that's very, yes. that's a great feeling. It sure is. 
and you still do... I, and then I run baby music. Baby music, and I remember when you asked me to come to your group, yes. and I went there with my camera. And got a car ticket, parking. <laughs> oh, you remember Oh, I felt that. so bad. Oh, but it was waved. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <It was> waved. <laughs> Because I told them that I went to Leo, and uh, it's her fault. So they said, okay, <laughs> we got to ticket her. They never found me. <laughs> oh, gosh, see, you have a good memory, too. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, I'm going to show this picture where you were teaching, and then uh, maybe you could explain this, what's happening when we, oh, he said, put it down. Well, Music Together is a uh, music program for children, small, very small children, zero to four, and their parents, grandparents, or caregivers. And an adult brings a child to um, the program. Right now we meet at East Hampton and also at the Children's Museum. And they do, they do music with their babies. And that's you standing up there... Uh sort of pontificating, that's me. <laughs> oh, I love that word. And here's another one. Oh, that, that's one of the favorite activities, the parachute. We oh. do a lot of um, waltz-type rhythms and beautiful wavy songs with my parachute. Mm -hmm. And usually there's a lot of babies right underneath that parachute if you see people down there. Uh -huh. And the babies sit and look at the colors and they listen to their mommy singing and they watch the colors waving up and down and they are so happy. Well, this is amazing so because I watched you. You work very hard. You move around a lot. Yeah, it's, it's hard work. Yes, and here's one more. Did I show this before? Or no, not? I don't think so. <laughs> no, there okay. we're setting up for an activity. Uh, if you notice, there's babies on people's laps. These, uh -huh. This is actually the baby baby class. These, nobody in this class is older than 12 months. And the point is, is to gauge the parent or the grandparent and the baby in a musical activity and teach them how to communicate musically. That's wonderful. I remember what, what, well, what I had seen was uh, they were dancing with the babies. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I have a picture of, no, I don't have a picture. Oh, it's a wonderful feeling. I was feeling. playing the piano. <laughs> Dancing it, with Teddy. Yes. Dancing with I, Teddy. I think that's the song. Oh my you gosh! Look what I have here. This is the wrong picture. <laughs> that must be your grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. Judy's grandchildren. They, I hope they're not going to because I. It took me a long time to find these pictures. Can you? Oh my gosh. They're so cute. They are, but this was many years ago. <laughs> they're not so cute anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're even more cute. Oh, good. They even more. And uh, what about this one? I have no clue. What do you mean? That, that? was a long time ago. <laughs> Who knows what we're doing? We're probably doing one of my silly songs. Your silly songs. <laughs> yes, these silly songs like, oh, I know what that is. It's um, a horse song. Uh, how does that go? Trottle Joe, Trottle Joe, you ride better than any horse I know. And at the last <laughs> closing of the song, you actually throw your whole body back. Whoa, Joe! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this one, too. Oi, there's, <laughs> there's some very cute babies there that I haven't thought about in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they, it's funny, you know, moms are so busy doing the dishes, thinking about dinner, taking care of the house, answering the phone, that a lot of times a day will go by and they won't have that much face-to-face -face time with their babies. You know, so true. They're with them, yeah. but uh -huh. they're not really with them. And uh -huh. so music class often gives moms a chance to really tune in to their little guys or grandmas or grandpas not or dads. Yet. I've had some wonderful dads in my class. And uh, over here you're showing your elbow. What does that mean? Who knows? Oh, I know. Shake it on your elbow. Oh. Probably we're touching our elbow for some musical reason. Long mm. gone for me. <laughs> Long gone. Oh, this was How many years ago was this? Well, I've been teaching music together since 2000 or 1999, so. So this, this is a baby's on This is at least five years ago. Married. No. <laughs> no? I think my oldest babies now are in fifth grade. Oh. It's quite a ways. Quite a ways. Clara was still a baby. My, my youngest daughter was one year old when I started teaching music together. 
Oh, look at this one. It's so cute. Yeah, it is cute. She's holding that little baby there. Yeah. Oh, this was fun. I'm so glad I found the pictures. Me too. I'm glad you did too. <laughs> so uh, this is so much like the other ones. I, I mean, it is, I don't know why you, how you find time to do everything you do. Oh. <laughs> And of course, you uh, now you are more free than years ago because all the your children all the are kids are in grown. school. Yep. So uh, because I remember the youngest one, she was very clingy. <laughs> she wasn't clingy. <laughs> she was attached. Oh, well, yeah. So you had to spend a lot of time. But I like to her. be with her. The I only, know. She was the last one. I didn't care. She could be as attached as she wanted because they grow up whether you like it or not. Oh my. Gosh, they do so fast. Right, so, so you might fast. as well hold but them my, while you've got them. Yeah, my last one was also <laughs> right. clingy, and I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you also help out sometimes at your uh, husband's uh, work? No, we try and avoid each other whenever possible. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, I, help, I do help out in the office once in a while. Yes. But we have such different work styles that... Uh, uh-huh. So he doesn't listen to you. He listens to me. <laughs> but he's not doing it. <laughs> he doesn't like that. I, uh, uh, I tend to be a little scattered. Oh, really? Oh, really? I never knew that about <laughs> Yeah, right. How can, how can you do all these things? Well, that's probably why I am scattered. But I think it's a gift to be able to have so many different kinds of things in your life. Right. So what kind of a doctor is John? He's an internist. Internist. And uh, how long, wait, since he's been a doctor, like for 30 years? Uh, yeah, I think yes. Well, he went to medical school, graduated from college in 78, and then he started right into medical school. So he, he's been a doctor a long time. I guess 30 and years. And he has a very good practice. He's a nice size practice. He's also yeah. HIV certified. You know, he's oh. certified to take care of people with AIDS and HIV virus. And he's also my doctor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, he's really very, not very relaxed, very calm and relaxed. He doesn't uh, give you concern about anything that's happening. No. Which I, is very, you know, reassuring. He doesn't panic about stuff. Yes, just like me. <laughs> oh, no, you're never anxious, right? Yes, no. <laughs> really. Now, you have, I, I met your sons at the time, you know, they were very little, and now I, I wouldn't be able to recognize them. <laughs> so what happened, your oldest one is uh, Nathaniel. Yes, he's at Roscoe. He's a what? junior at Roscoe. Is that, uh, he's in like high school or like Yeah, he's upper? high school, high school. There's no college oh, 11th here. grade, not yet. Oh. He's starting to look at colleges now. I can't believe it. And what is he taking up? Uh, I don't know, but he really loves international relations. He spent a lot of time traveling in the last couple of years, which is sort of strange considering he's only 17, but he, he went to Singapore last summer, arranged the trip himself, paid for a good deal of it, and he went to Africa this year, the Middle East. Oh, my God. Aren't you scared when he goes there? Oh, he's always with good people. Or, you know, we know what he's doing. He's a very responsible young person. It's amazing. He was always a very bright child. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a mover. And Hank. Oh, he is adorable. He was your sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you yeah. have to have full disclosure. Judy was Hank's piano teacher. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he still remembers. I was so shocked. I was so pleased when he, a few years later he just came up to me and uh, he said, Hi, Mrs. Lead. Because, <laughs> you know, most kids wouldn't even bother. All right. And uh, he was just so warm and friendly. He's a good boy. Yes. And he spent some really nice time with you. He did, yes. He, he liked piano. He hated practicing, but he loves piano. He that, likes music, so. Yeah, he was very good. He followed instructions. Yeah. And he would, you know, like, you know, you know, as a teacher, you know that it's satisfying. Yeah, especially so, when they want to listen. 
Yes. And uh, so what is he uh, interested in mostly? Biking. He's, he's, he's a big biker. He's, become, he's done a couple of triathlons in the last year with his dad and one on his own. And he's about to go on a cross-country bike trip this summer from Georgia, the state of Georgia, to Santa Monica Beach in California. That's where they end up. My, oh, my. I never would have thought that that I'm about. nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> only two wheels. <laughs> yes, only two wheels. Hank, I trust. It's the rest of the country I don't trust. <laughs> yeah. And Clara, she's, I just saw her. It's, she became a beautiful young lady. And she, she still is, yes. Yes, I mean, she was a and she's little a kid. She's a singer. You're kidding me. I didn't know she could carry a tune. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's very, she's musical in a very quiet, unassuming way. But she was, uh, we just went to her chorus rehearsal last night, and she enjoyed her music so much. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. So. And that's your whole family. And would you consider, uh, what's that girl's name? Trina. Huh? My big girl? Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about well, she's her. She's in the city, so <laughs> she's, she's yes, married I, and gone. Yes, I haven't, I didn't see her so much because she was in the city all yeah, the she time. Was but I just gone. saw her, and she's gorgeous. And she's gorgeous. She is gorgeous. And uh, the baby's cute. But I'm talking about uh, the girl who was with you. Sylvia. Sylvia, yes. yes. She's still with you. She's, well, she really is with John. She works in the office yeah. now, three days a yes. week. Yes. Well, that was good, because I remember she said she was with you when Hank was born. Yeah. So. yeah she's been with us a long time. So it's good that she's gone on to um, you know, a career that she can take with her when the last of the kids is out of the house. Right. That was very nice of you. Well, I mean, you something suggested. To do. No, no. Well, Sylvia's got a, you know, she's got a mind of her own. And you, in the very beginning, you said you teach Hebrew school in the, the synagogue. Right. So uh, I, I, I run a very small Hebrew school at Temple Adis Israel uh, in yeah. Sag Harbor, the oldest synagogue yeah. on Long Island. Yes, I've been there. It is, and... Uh, because I was with you when you be at a synagogue someplace else. Right, that's right. And then, and, uh, well, that was a lot of work because you had to schlep everything always. Always. Always, and that was. Oh, that was so much work. It's so good to be, have a place of one's own. So everything is there. You don't have to uh, take it out and put it back. No, everything is there. It's a, it's a, it's a jewel and box how, of a synagogue. And how long? Uh, which days do you work there? Well, we have school on Monday. Um, we have a baby program now on Fridays. Of course, you know who runs that one. Yeah. Um, and then next year we'll have Monday and Wednesday school, as well as, you know, different activities through the year. We have and a big, you, you, you know, teach them for bar mitzvahs and all that I stuff? Do, I do the Hebrew teach. I'm the school director. I have two, three other teachers and uh -huh. a couple of junior teachers. And um, we all teach Hebrew to different ages of kids. And then we do prayers and holiday customs and holiday celebrations. And what else do we teach? Eth Jewish, a lot of ethics and a lot of Midrash, understanding sort of the big ideas about God. So I'm um, just curious how many days it takes you to do all that? How many days a week? Well, I've done it so long now that, you know, you get used to it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a good three days of work a week. Three days. And then you have to go there, especially when uh, some sort of uh, celebration goes and programs, on. programs, right. Yes. Yeah. But that's a pleasure. I would go yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I would be there, so I might as well yeah. do something. <laughs> <laughs> you are wonderful. I have so many nice memories about you and your whole family. Thank it's, you. You are very, and I remember uh, you were doing things for each holiday. You made the kids craft and all that. Right. And, that, <laughs> and we still that do. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our latest project is we made it a full, probably the size of two of these glass squares. 
we had a big piece of canvas and we made the Jewish year in a circle. Oh. Sort of a, a, it's almost like a mandala. There's a symbol for each month of the year and the name in Hebrew and English. And then around it is stars and moons and I'm going to put the kids, each student's name will go around the, the whole year. That's nice. It's very, be it's really pretty. It's going to be a very nice work. And it's going to hang over there. In we'll the, put it in the synagogue somewhere. In the synagogue. And I've seen you at the uh, East Hampton Jewish Center. Yes. With the, you were doing something with the kids. Well, the whole, all, all of the synagogues out here got together mm. for Yom Hatzma'ot, Israeli Independence Day. Uh huh. And um, I was, I was working on a map project with the children. That's a map. A map project, the map of Israel. Mm -hmm. Sort of like, guess where this picture goes, guess where the, you know, the name of the city goes or landmark or whatever. Oh, so it was sort of like teaching them geography. Yes. So John and I spent, I, I draw, ter I mean, my drawing skills are <laughs> nil. But John fortunately draws really well. We spent a whole afternoon painting and drawing the map of Israel on a big piece of cloth. <laughs> It was actually sort of nice times to spend together. It is. Did he ever see it? Oh, yes. Oh, he it did. dried on the kitchen table, so he, he saw it quite a bit. <laughs> no, but he didn't go to the cellar. He didn't go to the No, I think he was on call that weekend or something. Oh. Well, Leo, I'm so, so happy to find all these things about you, and now I know where to go if I want something done. Yeah, you just hope <laughs> I'm there when you get there. <laughs> And, uh, well, you are a pleasure, Thank as you. always. And would you believe we've been sitting here and just Schmoozy. talking for half an hour. Well, thank you for, for inviting me. I'm and really pleased. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you. <laughs>